All right, all right. So hello, my name is Niger Chambers of Big Gold Belt Media. Tom, it's a pleasure to talk to you today about episodes three and four of season three of Upload. Um, getting right into it. Uh, listen, you're no stranger of of Greg. You all have had uh, amazing collaborations in the past, obviously with Space Force. Um, I definitely want to tip my hat to your work on uh, what many folks call is the best show on television as Ted Lasso oh. um and and, <laughs> and and then now being a part of one of my favorite shows I was super excited to see what you were going to bring uh, uh to the to the series um and again uh you holding uh the works for uh, director works for uh, episodes three and four also want to give a shout out to your writers Megan and Farron uh also alongside with this ride here uh, but just being a part of the upload family um how has it been for you so far Amazing. You know what was crazy with Upload? It's the first time I jumped onto a show I was a fan of, if you get what I mean. I'd yes. really followed the first two series really closely. And it's one of the few things me and my girlfriend can sit and watch together. <laughs> so it was really interesting then jumping on board to work on it because I'd followed all the actors and the storyline so closely. And, you know, it was fun because I'd sat and watched it and thought, oh, if I got a chance to work on it. I might do this and I might try that. And then I actually got to do it. And the best thing about it was everyone was as lovely as, you know, I hoped there would be and and more so. And it was just such a great, fun th thing to be part of. Yeah. And scripts, my particular scripts of my episodes delivered. The, the, I got plenty of juicy uploads-esque, <laughs> crazy, surreal moments that I'd hoped for, you know, that came thick and fast and I was really pleased I got to do to, to do them absolutely um yes uh I thoroughly enjoyed this up uh these episodes when I say this upload these episodes uh we're getting to see um some new relationships created we're seeing some uncharacteristic uh activities by uh characters in Ingram having a job is kind of mind-blowing to me to say the least um, and then we have uh, we have characters existing in two places at the same time, which is creating conflict uh, for folks. Uh, since you are a fan, I, I definitely want to ask, it, it, who is your favorite character? Uh, I mean, you know, it's like picking your favorite Power Rangers. They've, they've all got particular set of skills and I rate them all. Yeah. I mean, I think Ingrid's character... I sort of love that she's the archetypal. In any other show, she would just be the bad guy. Yeah. But um, the writing of her part and then Allegra in her performance brings so much depth to it and makes it so three-dimensional. Three -dimensional. And she then becomes this character where you meant to hate her, but you sort of love her and she has all these beautiful flaws to her. And then, yeah, as you've touched upon there, in my episodes in particular... Uh, we get to see uh, Ingrid in some very um, non-Ingrid environments, <laughs> and she, the results are as hilarious as you would you would hope. I echo that exactly. As much as I love AI guy and Owen's performance, Allegra um, has really been. Um, she's first of all, she's such a, a, a trooper because you know the fans definitely have been very hard on turning the page in terms of Ingrid, Ingrid being a good person. I mean, they just had it out for her now for two seasons. I could just imagine what their response is going to be for her in this season. But I think it's about time we turn the page and realize, and like, yeah, she's flawed, much like many of us, but she's a good person. And I, and I, and well, I want her to win. I want her to have love, you know? And uh, yeah, that's the thing. She's just like in love, you know? And she obviously it has these weird ways of showing it and it forces <laughs> her to do these really crazy questionable things but it's all in the name of love you know you gotta <laughs> you gotta rate that and uh yeah we can all relate surely we can all yeah. relate to that <laughs> yeah a thousand percent uh going back to ai guy uh is i can talk about owen's performance for just hours and hours uh but we see ai guy uh learning to be less creepy learning to use proper eye contact and having a little break for himself at times uh which i love this and uh and 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 this is why you know these are two of my favorite episodes because as much as 
uh, in society, AI is being deemed as a threat and, and, and some really much fear it. Uh, we're seeing a fun side of AI uh, and a side of AI that's much like us. Uh, and, and again, we're seeing him get to kind of relax, take a break, even though he doesn't eat. All these sorts of just funny things. A lot of uncharacteristic activity from AI guy. Uh, how, yeah, how? I mean, I think that, that the funniest moment in my episodes, I just won't give it away, but I'll just say cheese. You know, I'll just say that. And then you'll know what I mean when you when you when you see it, and it's all down to uh, Owen's amazing performance and the great concept that you know the writers have set up with him. And I just think it's hilarious now, right? So yeah, watching season one, AI. I knew what AI was, <laughs> and I knew AI was a thing. And yeah. it's just so funny now how much in the zeitgeist it is, how much it is in the conscious. Now people are now suddenly genuinely scared of it. And yeah. we're having, you know, very real world reactions to AI. Um, so now the, the weird character of Owen, <laughs> <laughs> the AI guy, sorry, is really under the microscope. And I just think it's so, it's such a nice counteraction to yes. all the fear about it that we have the show where this AI guy <laughs> gives all the best punchlines and all the best jokes, you know. And uh, is often made to look the most ridiculous, you know. Um, but I have such a, a, a soft spot for Owen. I think Owen's so great and he's so young and he's just he's at the start of his career. And um, I think we're going to see a lot more of him, you know. And uh, I'm so, I was, we're so lucky with Upload that we get to have like six of him at once. You know? <laughs> well said, I agree. Uh, huge, huge fan. Um, and, and then Nathan, man, uh, obviously we, we, we see Nathan exist in, uh, both in, uh, the real world here and also in Lakeview. And again, as I mentioned, that's creating some conflict for folks, folks saying, Hey, I saw him there and I saw him here. And obviously we see Ingrid who is very much in love with the, the, the copy version. And then, um, and then, and then Nora, who's, uh, you know, I, I will say very well, she said it, she's in love with this Nathan, but this seems to be a little bit of minor hesitation, but also she's ultimately concerned about his health because anybody who's ever downloaded typically don't stay around. So it just seems like they're on borrowed time. I want to, I want to talk about some of the jokes with Nathan, the body shaming jokes with Nathan yeah. audience. Uh, I think it's hilarious because for me, I do not notice the difference. Uh, but what I think it's so funny because everybody else is around uh, definitely talk about the more Jack, the, the, the Nathan who's who put on a little bit weight, who's obviously hasn't been hitting the gym like before. Uh, how did you how did you all kind of encompass those jokes and, and, and working with Robbie? How did you how did you want to like really portray those without getting too too sensitive with it? You know, well, do you know what? There was a lot of discussion about the size of the belly we put on him, <laughs> you know, because there's obviously the uh, Avengers Thor version of that joke yeah. where Thor gets super fat. Yeah. And what we arrived upon was actually it's funnier that all it is, it's just that very real bit of, you know, weight that's just, you know, that he's let slip, you know, that would just happen to a body that had laid comatose, you know, yeah. Yeah. exercising for all that time. <laughs> and it's just, it's, I don't know if you guys say this words in the US, but we have, it's just a podge. Just yeah, a yeah, podge. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little podge. It's not a belly, it's just a little bit of a podge. But as we've established with Nathan in the in the previous series, you know, he's, he's a good looking guy and he sort of knows it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, I always think that very first shot that I think Nora sees of Nathan, it's him checking himself out in the mirror of his motorbike and he... And he slicked his hair back and stuff. So we just thought it was just even funnier if it was just actually very subtle. But to him, it's this big, massive deal. Yeah. And then with the Nathan that's in Lakeview, then all of a sudden he becomes this Adonis, you know, <laughs> he's been, you know, set to battle against. Yeah. And the difference between them is actually quite <laughs> minuscule. But in Nathan's head, it's like, you know... Yeah. It's 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 Brad Pitt versus yeah. <laughs> a real a real guy, a, every man off the street, you know. Um, and and it is funny that 
when framing up the shots, you just found little moments in the real world to <laughs> remind the audience it's there. And we had great moments where, you know, even, you know, his his mom thinks he's died. His mother thinks he's died. And when she first sees him, mm-hmm. there's obviously that initial, you know, reaction and feelings overjoyed and moved and touched. But then even she notices, oh, there's a little, <laughs> no, a little punch there, you know. <laughs> Um, so it just it, it, it provided lots of visual comedy moments, but then also um, for Robbie himself, you know, um, lots of moments where, you know, he gets to show his flaws and all the chinks yeah. in his armor. And um, it's another reason I love the show is again in any other show, you know, Robbie would just be the the heart throb and the the, the love interest, but in this yeah. show, he's he's run through the mill as as much as the other characters and he has all these neuroses going on and he's battling with all these nuances of mm-hmm. being in the world and having a version of himself that's in Lakeview and this sort of weird love triangle he's now part of he's part of a love triangle himself yeah and um Robbie again is just such a, a great actor and relishes you know to relishes the opportunity to make himself look stupid at times, you know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he, re- he really goes for it. And we had lots of opportunities for those in, in my episodes. Yeah, a thousand percent. I, I love this cast, man. I, I swear. Um, there's, there's just so many little hidden moments. And not even hidden moments. There's just, just so many just moments within each and every episode where uh, this this cast really decides to just show their talent or just really exercise their versatility and Robbie and and Andy, I mean, they're they're just fantastic together. Whether they're working together on scene or whether they have scenes apart, they just do some really amazing things. And also another set of characters which I did not have on my bingo card is uh, Alicia having a relationship with Karina. I, t- I didn't see this coming. I'm with it, uh, but I'm also with anything that Alicia does, even though I my heart is definitely there with Luke, who. Luke is definitely feeling a little left out here. Uh, how <laughs> how how do we see this playing out? And whether you want to speak as the director or as a fan, how do how do you, how do you perceive this mini? I, I you can almost call it a love triangle. Maybe it's not, but <laughs> how would you kind of see this dynamic with the three of them kind of playing out? Yeah, I think it's great that um, it sort of heads in a different direction than what we're expecting. You know, I can I can say that. Yeah. Um, you know, like any other show, we've sort of set up those typical triangles, those will they, won't they. Yeah. Um, elements. But you gotta remember this is the future, man. You know, and in the future, like sexuality is really fluid and you know, it's something you can, you know, I'm I I am we are there now where it's not a thing anymore. You know, yeah. it's not, you know, it's not a it's not that big of a talking point. And yeah. uh, I guess the idea um, was that we push that forward um, to its sort of natural progression in the future where, yeah, it really isn't up for yeah. discussion. It really isn't a talking point. You sort of, you know, you end up with whoever you sort of fancy at that time and whoever mm-hmm. <laughs> makes you happy, you know. And, um, you know, God knows what our sex lives and our romantic lives will be like in the future Mm -hmm. and um yeah i think this sort of alludes to a world where you know anything goes and it doesn't always quite pan out in the ways you're expecting you don't you don't necessarily end up with the people that you expect to and um yeah stay tuned to see how that pans out again luke uh is one of my you know favorite characters in the show um I really, really relate to his plight of um, his sort of love affair with Nathan, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more, That's true. More so. That is true. More so. Because I, yeah, I have that thing. I get man crushes, man. I get yeah, big yeah. man crushes on people. Yeah. And, you know, I meet people and within five minutes, I think, oh, he, I think this is my new best friend. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> His sort of relentless pursuing of Nathan actually is where, what really gets me, <laughs> what really plugs uh, straight, plugs at my heartstrings. And um, yeah, I always relish those sort of moments. And um, it's sort of uh, it's sort of so sweet. I think that 
you know, in in the in the world of all this technology buzzing around and yeah. virtual reality um, realm they're part of. He just wants like a new best mate and he wants to be a guy and he wants to hang with his guy mate, you know. <laughs> and I think that's so relatable and I think it's so true that that won't go anywhere, you know. Yeah. Interestingly, just, just to raise it as a point I think is sort of funny is um, because of uploads, uh, I got back into gaming, you know, um, as research, I bought an Oculus when I mm. first came mm. And I started playing this game, and I hadn't gamed in 10 years, and neither of my friends, but I immediately called two of my best friends and said, right, you need to get an Oculus because it's this game we can all play yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was about, yeah, two years ago, and now nightly, me and my two best friends now play this game together. <laughs> In the virtual world, it's basically Fortnite, but in yeah, VR. Yeah, yeah. And we're always like, when we win, we're giving out virtual hugs, and we've got this whole WhatsApp group that's just about that game. Oh, that's so and cool! We have all like analysis of the performances when once we've finished, <laughs> and um, yeah, it sort of makes me think of Luke and Nathan, that sort of friendship blossoming. <laughs> that that is that's a- to VR and across the realms of you know real world and um in lakeview um that, yeah that's, a, that's an amazing point uh <laughs> really quickly uh before my for my final question also i just want to say the dragon tail cameo top tier right there i was like i know that one um i have to ask here a little bit of a fun question here uh especially for your time working on space force if you had to put steve carell in upload what type of character would he be Oh man, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because he could obviously be be behind the curtains. You know, the thing you forget about Steve is like I've seen he's played some like bad guys before, and I think so works. <laughs> you know, like when he was Rumsfeld or when he was in Foxcatcher. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You sort of you remember that Matrix movie. <laughs> <laughs> reloaded where he meets the maker and it was the guy with the white beard and the white hair yeah <laughs> like imagine if you know this conspiracy that is the, that they're chasing like who's behind the curtain and they keep going yeah yeah cur- curtain and imagine you imagine if you got to like the maker the absolute mm. <laughs> man pulling all the strings and it was our mate Steve imagine that <laughs> that'd be cool all right I'll give I'll give Greg a text see if we can get that happening uh I uh had an amazing time with Steve you know that's one of those where it's um they say don't meet your heroes but if your hero is Steve Carell then yeah try and spend as much time with him as possible because he was lovely and you know he'd do this nice thing of you know if you gave him a note uh, and he liked it, and he went for it. He'd come and tell you afterwards. Yeah, that was that was good. I like that. And then you had to do do this weird charade of pretending <laughs> you were cool. You know, you'd go, "All right, okay, cool. yeah, yeah, no, no problem, Steve." And then yeah. you know, <laughs> really, you want to jump up and like tell, "Look, Steve Carell just liked my note, man." But you had to then like, "Yeah, back on with my job." Yeah, that just uh, <laughs> happens all the time, man. You know. But he was lovely, and um, yeah, hope I get to to work with him again. So yeah, we'll put we'll put that in the suggestion suggestion box for season four. Absolutely, love to hear. Honestly, Tom, this was an amazing time talking to you about your two episodes, episode three hundred three and three hundred four of season three of Upload. Hopefully, we get a chance to talk again soon, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being a part of the Upload family and and the work you've done so far on the series. Great man, thanks very much. Great meeting you. Absolutely, take care. Thank you.